Flag salute, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> open Public Meetings Act statement. The New Jersey Open Public Meetings Law was enacted to ensure the right of the public to have advance notice of and to attend the meetings of public bodies in which any business affecting your interest is discussed or acted upon. In accordance with the provisions of the Act, the Board of Education has caused notice of this meeting to be published by having the date, time, and place thereof posted at the Augusta Branchville, Lafayette, and Sussex Post Offices, and notice sent to the New Jersey Herald Star Ledger and the Clerk of the Boroughs of Branchville, Sussex, Townships of Frankfurt, Lafayette, and Wallach. Mission Statement. Highway Regional High School in partnership with staff, family, and community is dedicated to the quest for individual excellence. By fostering high standards of achievement, we prepare students to become responsible and productive members of a diverse society. Roll call. Uh, Ms. Kimer is not here. Mr. Nataro is not here. Mr. Kehoe? Present. Mr. Dunn? Here. Mr. Borchu? Here. Mr. Miller? Here. Mr. Incliffe? Here. Mrs. Anderson? Here. Mr. Vealy? Here. Dr. Ripley? Here. Executive session. A motion will be made to High Point Regional High School Board of Education in executive session provide an update on personnel negotiations and legal items, which are exempt from public participation pursuant to the New Jersey Public Law 1975, Chapter 231, Open Public Meetings Act. Any discussion held by the board which need not remain confidential will be made public when appropriate. Minutes of the executive session will not be disclosed until the need for confidentiality no longer exists. The board will reconvene a public session in cafeteria annex at the conclusion of the executive session. We need a motion. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay.
to all of the staff as well. I'm sure sorry in August she had to in here and there trying to catch up on a couple things so we're excited about that. She comes to us as with the math program um, and teaching. Um, and we're also looking to finalize the schedule. Um, our results will change some things here and there to get those from the Senate District about three weeks of schedules um, on the student side. Um, as that comes in, we're just looking for a fantastic opening and a strong opening to the school year. So that's where we're at. Any questions for me?
and I'm hopeful that when our AP teachers come in for a curriculum day, they can look at back-to-back -back years, particular areas where um, growth may have occurred or where there's room to target improvement. Here are our courses and our teachers, and this is Loyola, and this is Shrope, and uh, this is Gonzalez um, are here this evening, so congratulations to um, three outstanding educators on, on their work. Uh, just a reminder of some of the benefits to the uh, AP curriculum. Of course, it can save you money. I'll jump ahead to the first slide. During our AP night, I profiled Brendan Finnegan, who just completed his first year at Rutgers. Uh, Brendan took nine AP courses. Rutgers awarded him 24 credits, and his family saved over $20,000 uh, freshman year. However, if I go back a slide, I believe, particularly with private institutions who so have a sticker price, of sixty, seventy, eighty thousand dollars $80,000 with enormous amounts of merit aid, the real financial benefit to students is that AP courses strengthen your college profile and can, can bring about an enormous amount of merit. So um, I think there are a lot of benefits that our students are, are benefiting from. Any questions on our, um, our AP curriculum and those results? I would say that it will probably be between 29 and 33. That, of course, has um, three or four students enrolled, and we have to collapse it. That's difficult. Perhaps we do that. We strive to run it the following year. We're not bound to, to run 33. Uh, the scheduling supports it. We also have a lot of teachers that did some, did really an incredible job taking on independent studies. Um, I don't want to start naming them. There are four or five teachers that took students um, on and did an independent study. A few teachers, Jacqueline McCarthy, um, including an independent study, taught five different AP courses. Um, so uh, we have a lot of teachers doing really, um, really interesting things. But our anticipation is that we'll be around 33. Uh, this summer, there is an agenda item for a few additional workshop days. Our co-teaching teams have not been finalized. Uh, prior to June meeting. So the focus of our curriculum days are developing new courses, co-teaching teams that have never worked together on a particular course, and then data analysis and curricular revision with AP uh, and PARC. So that's what we're going to um, Several months ago, Mr. Drellick presented uh, on some of the outstanding professional development that the STEM teachers had uh, engaged in, and I had a conversation with a colleague recently who uh, prompted me to think about um, our humanities and some of the great things that uh, they've done. And they have been all over uh, the U.S. Um, that woman looks familiar. That is uh, Corey Loyola, who was our 2016 Gilder Lehrman New Jersey Teacher of the Year. Uh, and she went out on her own and sought a fellowship at Yale and spent a week there studying um, the impact and the historical significance of Frederick Douglass. And I believe she, Mr. Diabino, had a plan to do something special with um, that, that bicentennial. Awesome. So thank you. Um, these professional development expenditures, a couple things, uh, many of them are occurring during the summer. So hats off to our staff for their commitment. Many of them are the byproduct of their initiative. But I really see most of these as a partnership. Many of the institutions hosting these have an award of grant money. Teachers have put their own time and money into it, and the board has graciously supported uh, quite a bit of them. Lisa Hodgins uh, will be presenting in, at the New Jersey Art Educators Conference in October, and her two topics will be service learning and differentiated instruction. And I'm excited to have her turnkey that present uh, those two topics to our staff. I'm sure she'll do a fantastic job on that. Uh, Ms. Erin Myers is either heading to or coming back from Savannah. So she pursues scholarship and uh, through uh, her own contributions, support from the board, and the Savannah College of Art and Design, she's studying at a world-class institution. Uh, Ms. Jacqueline Sutton is at Columbia. She received a fellowship from the College of St. Elizabeth 
and the College of St. Elizabeth said if the High Point Board could pay a portion, and they would pay a portion, they would sponsor her to go to Columbia. So congratulations to Mrs. Sutton for uh, pursuing that. At this conference, she is uh, dining and studying and working with the leading Holocaust academics in the world. So really prestigious stuff. Ms. Riccardi will be on Broadway. Um, and thank you. Uh, we, I believe we have the finest performing arts program in New Jersey. And we support her every summer in her efforts um, to develop her craft on Broadway. So I'm excited about that. Uh, Ms. Jacqueline McCarthy will be in San Antonio. Um, she's very excited about a, um, a trending, popular concept called design thinking. And we're excited for her to come back and turnkey that um, with the staff. And Ms. Heather Gonzalez, who is here right now, thank you to her husband for taking care of the three kids in the house while she was in Tampa um, as an AP reader. It's competitive to be recognized and accepted as an AP reader. Um, and I believe she's the third high point teacher to um, have done this. Um, but again, this is a partnership. Uh, the district provided her with um, really professional development days and the college board sponsored her trip. So I, I really feel that all three parts are working to make things like this happen. Uh, I think I mentioned this briefly. The World Language Department um, had an outstanding trip to Morris Central. And then they had a very inspiring day out in the board office working with uh, the director of uh, world languages from TCNJ. So doing some really interesting things. And although he's a STEM a teacher, we'll, we'll include him in this presentation. Uh, Mr. Weiss will be traveling to Philadelphia for a uh, week-long AP Institute um, in a few weeks. So thank you to the board for your support and to our staff for their initiative in pursuing a really fantastic PD. Uh, Anti-bullying Bill of Rights. This is uh, a little confusing to me because when you try and understand the requirements between uh, violence and vandalism, and uh, affirmative action and the anti-bullying rule of rights. There are a lot of regulatory requirements. So thank you, Mr. Craig, for um, doing the vast majority of the legwork on this. Just give you a little overview of our response to him. We love children. Everyone who goes into education wants to advocate for, for a climate where all kids are comfortable and accepted. Um, the head of the anti-bullying rule of rights has mandated certain steps be taken to guarantee that responsiveness occurs when there's an allocation. Uh, the administration, our guidance counselors, our resource officers, main office staff, uh, Mr. Tokar, uh, Ms. Briggs, and Mr. Tokar with data, and Mr. Craig oversees our safety climate team. So thank you to all those people and to our staff in general for being um, patient and cooperative and thorough when there's an accusation of him. I think as most people know, when the anti-bullying uh, Bill of Rights came out, um, it was a bit uh, untenable. And it required that any time anyone made any accusation, a very lengthy investigation had to go into place. That's since been um, uh, abbreviated and streamlined, and I think we're at, at a better place. But each year, we have to do trainings. We have to implement our program. We have to investigate all claims. We have to evaluate how we're doing and seek to approve. On the agenda this evening, I'm requesting that the board approve our self-assessment from 2017-2018. Uh, once again, we scored extremely well, but there were three areas where we could strive towards a perfect score. Uh, more training, and I think number three there particularly, I'd like to work with some of our volunteers to make sure that um, anyone the district approves to work with our children has uh, all the thorough training they should have. And we can do more in the classroom to educate um, the students. So those are our goals for some improvement for next year for our HIP policy. And here are the numbers from this year. Uh, for 2017-18, there were 14 total HIP investigations. Seven of them were found to be legitimate uh, instances of HIP. Uh, one was a code of conduct, four were unfound. I think if you look at the very bottom left, you'll see there were 37 cases just five years ago. And I think you'll see the number of cases has really dwindled as students, 
teachers, staff get a better idea of what really is and is not a hit. Uh, but we had seven confirmed cases this year. So questions on our, our hit policy, our self-assessment. Okay, good thanks. And last, just a couple of shout outs there. Um, Mr. Craig recently presented at a statewide conference and it's not uncommon to be visiting another school in the area and I bump into Mr. Craig. His districts around the state um, are constantly asking him to come and share his expertise with them. We had a wonderful end of the year luncheon and I'd like to thank the Education Foundation, in particular three members of our staff, um, Ms. Christina DiMatteo, Ms. Jacqueline McCarthy, and Ms. Cindy Zajac for their commitment and their efforts to, uh, to link our, non our nonprofit Private Ed Foundation with um, trying to make a difference and enhance what we're doing here. And Henry Lembo is a superstar. He's a rising senior who is doing nothing but good things all day, every day. And he was a boy state, so we're very proud of Henry. Our graduation, I believe this was the most streamed event ever. So Mr. Fenlon's done an awesome job with live stream. And this is uh, Julianne Mangano, great student, awesome social media ambassador. She's on a trip to Rome. So it was a really cute tweet. She's watching the High Point graduation uh, from a nice um, you know, bistro in uh, the center of Rome. And our social media students, they keep posting. So it's nice to see that summer's here. But they'll, um, they'll pop into school and they'll see sports physicals going on or they'll see students uh, preparing the building and they continue to post and have a social media presence. And our TSA students were recently in Georgia. Uh, Matt Carrera took them there when that was on the agenda this evening. But thank you to Matt and congrats to our students for representing us so well.
say on behalf of the board, thank you from the Lina family for donating our uh, DNM Anything else? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Roll call. Mr. Boykin? Yes. Mr. Miller? Yes. Mr. Ankler? Yes. Mrs. Anderson? Yes. Mr. Kehoe? Yes. Mr. Gunn? Yes. Mr. Good? Yes. <coughs> Policy? There's nothing before us, but Dr. Ripley said that we will have a few remaining recommendations next month. Uh, negotiations and following month. Negotiations. Uh, no result for mediation yesterday. We will be moving on to fact findings, and we should be hearing something about that in a couple of months. Uh, buildings and grounds. I will prepare to do this. Just to report, things are, seem to be going well with our lab renovations this summer, and all the work that the uh, staff is trying to accomplish in the very short amount of time that they have. Finance. Uh, we're looking for a motion on items one through ten. Um, I'm going to say we have a
would become necessary for us to reduce what had already been board approved and state approved as our uh, fiscal 19 budget. The problem, however, was that it had to be board approved prior to the 1st of August. And the fact that we had a board meeting tonight allowed us to uh, proceed. Now, I don't want to uh, mitigate the difficulty in this because this does demand a degree of austerity that will have an impact on educators and on students. The decisions that were made were based upon the desire to limit the impact of those decisions, or at least a direct impact on students. We also did not want to reduce current staff members. So these decisions were not made lightly. They were difficult. But based upon the circumstances and the late notification and the demand to have this done almost immediately, we proceeded in earnest today, and these decisions were made. Um, as I said, it will have an indirect impact on students, as all decisions have, and it will uh, impact our ability to provide the comprehensive, world-class education that we pride ourselves on in this institution. However, the decisions were also made not to have any impact on people who have been granted contracts for the coming year uh, who will not be notified that they will not be coming in September. So although this admittedly will have an impact, the decisions were made to, be, to limit the impact directly on students and on staff. The concern, however, is in the future. We don't know where this goes from here. It was anticipated, as was addressed in the New Jersey Herald article on Sunday, apparently inaccurately, although I'm not suggesting they had access to the information because we didn't have access to the information, that it was approximately $140,000 reduction for fiscal 19, which means this coming school year for which we've already approved a budget. It was significantly higher. We didn't know about that until today. We do continue to have concerns over what the state's plans are for the coming years. There have been, there is a concern that this is not going to be a one and done reality. And that we have concerns that this will be borne out over several years. And what has been communicated will have a, if implemented, the fullest extent communicated would have a significantly a significant impact on what we do every day, and uh, I have concerns. Board has concerns about how that how that will be managed moving forward. But it was necessary to bring that up, particularly on the heels of this directive today. Um, and we're hopeful to be able to communicate to the community. As we proceed, as we get more information, we want to be communi as communicative as possible on how we will proceed. And I just want to add to this that I think that um, it's a dirty deal that the governor gave us an amount of money that he that he said this is what your school will have to spend. And we got that number in March, and. Now, six weeks before school opens, he takes $400,000 away from us. That's just us. Um, many schools in the county got hammered big time. It's just, it's untenable that they can just do this, but they can. And um, I, I can just write my representatives, because that's There's, there's about 600 schools in the state, and 177 got reduced state. The rest saw an increase. So an increase. And the majority of the reductions came in Sussex County? All the four schools in Sussex County saw okay. a reduction. Cape May County and Ocean. 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 Okay. So it's just, it's very upsetting that our district had to struggle with this. To, I mean, today was the day that you had to come up with the numbers, but this is going to be a struggle during the school year coming up. All these great things that James Campbell just presented to us about the professional development, which is awesome, uh, 
there are some big cuts in that area coming up because we don't want to cut staff and we don't want to cut programs for the kids and it, it angers me it angers me but thank you for getting it taken care of in a timely manner and i think this board has to move forward in really working hard to to talk to our people in trenton and say stop doing this figure out a different way because this is just terrible Personally, I, I echo those comments. Um, I'm incensed by it as a board member who feels like I do my due diligence in putting things together. We're given deadlines when we have to work on budgets, and we're provided numbers, and then the state comes around and pulls the rug out from underneath you, and everybody, every stakeholder in this school, students, parents, board members, staff, should be incensed, and, and I'm not. I don't direct these comments at anybody that they, as one individual, can do something about it. But somebody has to complain to the powers that be. There's clear punishment directed at certain areas of the state, political districts, and, and I don't mean this to be a political comment, but you know, Sussex County and Cape May. There was a reason why we were hit hardest. Um, hopefully, things change somehow if there is a board, but we now as a board have to make do with that rug being pulled out from the rest and, and I think it's gonna be difficult. Well that's just it being you know Dr. Ripley had touched on this. We have a lot of uh, investigating to do and a lot of soul searching to do and we'll be communicating to the public. This is two years in a row that we passed the budget and we're told that's the only amount that you're receiving. Last year, we have to make a joke. While I'm hopeful that Trenton will come to their senses and tell us ahead of time what those reductions will be during budget season, I am not hopeful. I'm not hopeful. So the only thing that we can do is assume it's not over, it's going to get worse before it gets better, and decisions will need to be made. We will be discussing this in public over the following months. So bear with us and we will give you the details as soon as we have the details. Anybody else? All right, roll call. Uh, Mr. Miller? Yes. Mr. Ancliffe? Yes. Mrs. Anderson? Yes. Mr. Kehoe? Yes. Mr. Dill? Yes. Mr. Boykin? Yes. Mr. Gill? Yes.
is made in alignment with those goals. It maintains the continuity of what we do and our purpose over a long period of time. And the, we, we review past goals so as to demonstrate that we have been successful in not only achieving the goals, but in maintaining our focus on the stated goals. And uh, so that process began several weeks ago, and uh, it is the hope to be able to proceed with those on the agenda for August. Okay, we'll move on to public comments on anything at all. If you want to, I know you do. No? I do. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? 